Now we will talk about the incision and the tools that are used for making the incisions and the flap designs. This is Parker Bard number three. It's the, it's a scalpel or we call it a blade holder. It has a unique design. With this angle, it will match this, the blade that it will come and feed will be feeded into this blade holder. You can see on the side there is grooves and these grooves will hold the sleeves of the blade. And how we will do it is using a needle holder or artery forceps. You can use whatever instrument that you can lock and unlock so you can safely handle the blade during this time. Coming to the blades, we have different shapes and sizes. This is blade number 15, which is the mostly widely used one for making incisions around and designing any flaps. I will show you how to feed the blade holder by holding the blade from the back away from the sharp edge so you will not affect its sharpness. Studying the design you can see that this angle will match the angle over here. So that means you are holding the blade in the right position. Studying here this is like an hourglass or a bottle shaped carving in the blade and this means we have narrow sleeves in the top and wider sleeves in the bottom. Now the wider sleeves should come so you can put your blade holder in the right position and then the narrow sleeves should meet the grooves in the right way. Then you will start pushing and you will hear the click. That means you have feeded your blade into the blade holder in the right way. Then you open. If you want to discard your blade holder, look at the edge that you can hold from the blade. Then upright it a little bit and lock your forceps and slowly take it out. This is how you will dislodge your blade from the blade holder. There is another kind of a blade holder. We call it the micro blade holder. And it is for delicate surgeries, mainly the perio surgeries. They are for gingival grafts or connective tissue grafts. This unique design is to hold the small blades that are usually the same as the blades in the regular or the universal shape. And as you can see, it, has, it doesn't have the sleeve design that you could have seen on the previous design. And this one will be just rotated and here in the middle you can see there is a groove that will be enlarged when you rotate it anticlockwise. Then you will insert your blade, then rotate it anticlockwise and slowly it will be attached and the grooves will be narrowed until it holds the blade in the right way. And this way the blade will stay in its place. And this is the microblade holder. Coming now, this is, as we have said, it's blade number 15. And it is for different incision making in the oral surgery. There is a unique design. We call it the blade number 11. It looks like a number one with its sharp and pointy edge, mainly for abscess drainage. Then coming to the blade number 12, as you can see, it looks like a number two here, sickle shaped, and this to maneuver any distal areas or around the sulcus, as you can see, it's a semicircular shape. So if we are looking around the sulcus of teeth, 
it will match it. Or if I want to reach the distal area, the most distal area, which is the tuberosity area in the maxilla, this is your blade of choice. Now we will reach our explanation until we talk about the elevators. And we have three different designs. This is the mostly used one, the malt number nine. It has a spoon shape and a pointy shape on the other edge. This pointy one is to reflect the dental papilla, while the spoon shape is to reflect the mucoperiosteum from the bone. This is freer. It looks like the spoon shaped on malt number nine, but it is even finer design and even smaller in diameter. And this is good to retract the, uh, to reflect, I mean, the gingiva from around a tooth before extraction. This is silden. Silden, as you can see, it's very heavy, very strong. It has the same spoon shaped design on malt number nine with a bigger spoon on one side, a smaller spoon on the other side, but you can see that it is heavy and strong. So it's good in retracting the mucoperiosteum from all the alveolar ridge, let's say, for example, in alveoloplasty surgery. And at the same time, you can hold it and retract the tissue away. So it will serve to purposes, one of which is reflecting, the other is ref retracting. Now we come to the retractors. Retractors, the main purpose for them is to retract the tissue away from the surgery and away and to make these tissues safe from any sharp edges or any bears or cutting instruments during the procedure, the surgical procedure. And this is Minnesota. The handle is up here, you can handle it from here, and then you will hold your flab. You have to keep the soft edge towards the tissue that you want to retract. So when you position it, you will position it towards, this, this part is toward the bone, and this part is toward the tissue. Then you retract the tissue away. You will depend on the bone as a fulcrum, from this edge and you will retract the tissue away along with the cheek. So this is Minnesota. This is Austin. Just remember the rattlesnake and the teeth over here. This is like the snake teeth and Austin is very firm, famous in, in their snakes. I think that's why its name Austin Retractor. And over here, this is good and having a good grip on the soft tissue. So it will grip it and there, you will ensure there will be no slippage. So you will hold the soft tissue away the same, in the same manner. This is the bone facing side. This is the soft tissue side. It's convex and smooth. And over here, just to ensure there will be no any slippage. This is fire beef. Usually fire beef come in two pairs. The other pair is exactly the same. This, and it is to retract the tissue in the right and the left at the same time. As we have said previously, for example, in alveoloblasty, there is a whole ridge you have retracted, you have reflected the tissue from so you need to reflect at the same time on the right and the left side. So use fire beef for this purpose. On both ways you will hold it and retract. And also it's good for retracting the cheek. Now weeder. Weeder have a very unique design. It's like a flower shape. And this abroad side is to reflect any muscular, strong muscular tissue like the tongue. 
This will keep the trunk away from your surgical side. It's not only for surgery. You can use it even for the most posterior teeth if you are even making a simple class one, let's say, for example, on the 3.8 or the 4.8. And the tongue is so huge, like in macro macroglossia uh, situations. So you need to retract the tongue in a very good and safe manner. So you can tell your assistant to use the weeder in this case and retract the tongue away from your surgical or operative site. Now, we will talk about the forceps. Tissue forceps are good in holding the tissue. Let's say, for example, in suturing time or in biopsies, you can use the one that is without projection and you, have, you can see there is horizontal lines within the teeth to ensure that there will be no slippage of the tissue when you hold it, but to ensure that even more securely, use the tissue forceps with the projection. And this will hold, will lock into a male and a female projections that will meet each other to ensure and secure the holding of the tissue tightly. So this is the tissue forceps with projection. Now we will come to the bone cutters. Starting with the bone bearers, they are in different shapes and sizes. And these bone bearers, either fissure bears or round bears, they will achieve multiple purposes when you cut the bone. Either you will want just to make some simple guttering, or you want to separate the two roots or three roots away from each other, your tool of choice is the bone bears. Now we have, this is ronger, and ronger either will be side cutting or side and end cutting like this design. The way you will use it is like a nail clipper. That means I will come close to the bone, let's assume that this is the bone, you will come close to it and then if I'm using it from the side I will hold the bone in one position I will not rotate the ronger this is forbidden just imagine it's a nail clipper then you will hold it in one place and then you will press and pull away that's it as simple as that again I will show you you will press and pull away that's how you will use it for the inside you will bring the tip of the ronger and you will cut and that's how you'll cut it and take it away. No rotational movement whatsoever or you will harm the bone and chip it in an undesired manner. This is ronger. The bone file. Looking at the bone file, it have two heads. One is a smaller and more rounded. This one is flat and longer. It depends. Sometimes some designs have different shapes, but all of them have this cross-hatched surface. And if you look at it from an angle, you will see that the teeth are all in one direction. And here they are like at a 45 degrees angle. That means when you want to use it, you will just rub the surface in one direction and then pull up and then come down back again and rub the bone again. This way, you will just only smooth the bone. Here, it doesn't serve a purpose of cutting the bone, but rather smoothening it. So these are like some sharp teeth in one direction and their action their manner of action is only in a pulling action, not a push and pull. Now, we have these two pairs. They are called the bone chisel and the mallet. The bone chisel is either bi-angled or a single angle. It depends on the purpose I want it to be used. And it's good at harvesting blocks of bone especially in implant cases or bony defects that I want to build on. 
This one is by angled and the way you will use it is just a very controlled manner. You will not knock hardly on it unless it's a controlled manner. That's the bone chisel and the mallet. Coming to the periapical curate. Periapical curate will go into the socket. Let's say for example you have a, a pathological disorder that you have seen in the your x-ray like uh, periapical cyst or periapical granuloma. Over here you have to take out that infected tissue or it will affect your healing process. So to get rid of it you will go inside the socket and you will scoop it out. Or for example if you have any debris that have fallen into your socket also you will clean it and you will make sure that it's clean using the curette. I hope this video was beneficial for everyone. If you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.